Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the different albums that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. And I get it from different places like my local record store, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. And so I've got a little bit of something from all those places this week here, including two box sets, 15 total items to run through with you. And we'll dive into that in just a bit. But before we do, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with new music finds and 15 different items that we're gonna run through here. And as we normally do, we kick off with new releases, but I'm actually gonna jump back a week here to November 11th. A couple things that didn't come in on time when I filmed that episode, um, but also some things I didn't think I was gonna pick up that I ended up uh, deciding to do. And partly why I'm wearing my Guns N' Roses shirt is I ended up breaking down and buying the Usual Illusion 1 or 1 and 2. Um, reissues the two CD editions of these that come with all the live tracks and everything on it. I mentioned in the last one I wasn't planning on doing it. I just didn't need any more live stuff in my collection, you know, things like that. But I'm a huge Guns N' Roses fan, and in the end of the day, I decided to go ahead and do it. I'm not you know, mad that I did it. I'm glad that I've got it in the collection. I'm gonna be able to pull it out. I wasn't totally in the mood and ready for it at the time when I, you know, it came out. Um, but I do think that down the road when I'm in a deep Guns N' Roses mood, it's gonna be great to have these, especially some of these recordings that feature Izzy Stradlin on them, like the song 14 Years, which is one of my absolute favorite songs. And then there's some cool cover songs on here. Um, uh, Train Kept Rolling, it's got, uh, Aerosmith on, guesting on it, Always on the Run that's got Lenny Kravitz guesting on it. So there were some cool reasons to go ahead and get it and have it. And I have to say, the live recordings sound really, really good. So, you know, my aversion to live recordings, because they often don't sound as good as the studio stuff, these are proving me wrong. So even more so glad to have it. The booklets inside and all that sort of stuff, really cool. So glad to have that in the collection. One that I had on order and would have been glad to get on release day, but it came after, was this box set here, Life Moves Pretty Fast, the John Hughes mixtapes. If you're a fan of John Hughes films like I am, if you grew up in the 80s, you're going to know some of these uh, famous movies like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Pretty in Pink, um, with some of the other ones, Weird Science, Breakfast Club. I mean, there's just so many of them. And those movies certainly made a stamp or marked a lot of us that grew up in that decade. And this is a cool collection of the songs from those movies done into their own mixtapes. And so it's a selection of tracks from all across these different movies where each one of the discs is made up in its own thing. So they're not chronological and they don't just go grouped by movie and stuff like that. They actually mixed each one of these to be a succinct listening thing with a different feel to each of the discs and that's kind of cool. Book Inside is very cool. There's a lot of great stuff in here, track by track commentary and stuff like that. And so um, definitely makes it worthwhile for that alone, but all the great music and everything that's in here um, is really good. So you grew up on those movies and you like those, I highly recommend that. All right, moving on to November 18th release day. There was a lot of stuff that I ended up picking up and I don't even have all of it here. I've still got, let's see, three things on order. There was an Udo a compilation called Legacy that is yet to be shipped, Vinnie Moore, guitar player for UFO that is yet to ship for me, and my Queen box set, The Miracle, I've yet to get, although I'm expecting that in a couple days. So kicking things off, the things that I did get, Neil Young, world record. You've probably seen the review of this. If not, I'm going to leave a link in the description for it. But brand new studio album with Crazy Horse. I wasn't overly fond of it when I first heard it, and it's one of those ones that really grew on me. And uh, if you wanna know more about that and my uh, you know, full opinion on it, definitely check um, the description for the link and you can see a full review and unboxing for that. Next one up is Kiss, Creatures of the Night, uh, the two CD deluxe edition reissue for the 40th anniversary of the album. I'm very happy with this, I have to say. Not only do you get the album itself remastered, 
But the second disc that's in here does a really good job of taking a nice selection of all the stuff from the box set and not um, replicating things. You know, on the box set, one of the things that was my complaint is that have two or three of the same song in a row, just different takes or versions. And I never like listening to the same song repeating over and over like that. And they don't do that on here, albeit a couple songs do repeat, but they're farther, you know, uh, far enough along in the track listing that you don't feel like you're immediately duplicating something. And there's some really cool outtakes on here that, you know, I hear these things and I really wish Kiss would take these today and re-record them and either flesh out the lyrics or update whatever they need to do on it and put out a new studio album based on these old tracks. They wouldn't have to write anything or do anything, but unfortunately, I do think we are um, at the end of KISS and there will probably not be another studio album or any kind of recording like that. So we are left with the archival stuff and it's great to be getting that. On that note, I did also pick up the full KISS box set and I have done a full review and unboxing of this. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for it. It's a beautiful, gorgeous box. Um, I did mention, you know, what, how I felt about the track listing and stuff that's on here. And I don't like it when it starts repeating and things like that. And some of the live material on here is uh, pretty raw and a little bit of distortion in terms of it, uh, you know, coming through and being picked up by the microphones and that sort of stuff. But there's also some really cool outtakes and unreleased tracks that make up for that on here. Um, I'm a huge KISS fan and getting any unreleased material like that makes it worthwhile to me. And if there's enough of it, then it counter, you know, is a counterweight to everything else that uh, could be included that maybe I'm not as much up for. I also like all the memorabilia. The book is done really well. I've enjoyed reading that and hearing from the different people involved in it and so forth. So this box set here, uh, while there was more unreleased material that made Destroyer better, I never was a fan of that album as much as I am a fan of Creatures of the Night. So even though there's less unreleased material on this one, I think this is a better box, but it's also, I think, partly because I like the album better. Next up, is uh, Queen, The Miracle, the two CD edition in the ebook. And disc one and two of this, well, there's only two discs, but is the same as disc one and two in the box set. So if you've got the box set, you don't need the two disc edition. Whereas with the Kiss CD, the second disc that's in here is a selections of. Nothing more uh, than what's on the box set, but it is a selections of, so it's a different track listing and stuff than the way that the discs are in the box. This, however, second disc is the same as the second disc in the box. My box didn't arrive yet, so I wanted to go ahead and pick this up and enjoy it, and boy, am I glad that I did, because I didn't have very high hopes for the box set, but that second disc called The Miracle Sessions is so good. I was never a big fan of the album itself. It was too glossy, too overproduced. These demo versions and alternate takes of stuff before they overly glossed it up is so much better. I'm going to be listening to the second disc in here uh, way more than I pull out the original album, I think. Plus, there's five unreleased songs in here. So not just that new track, Face It Alone, but some other cool um, outtakes and demos that never made the album that, again, are well worth having as part of this. So that's a very cool release. Then there was a brand new Arc of Life. So this is made up of Yes Band members, current ones, and Yes Band related people who've either played as session guys, helped them out on tour, or part of side projects and stuff like that. But we do get the current drummer, current bassist, and current vocalist of Yes in this, plus fleshed out by a couple other session guys that have played with Yes and so forth. Um, between the first disc of Arc of Light, this is the second one here. I am enjoying this one better than the first one. Then we've got a brand new autograph album called Beyond. And unfortunately, only one remaining original or original member uh, was in the group at this time. Randy ran the bass player. And unfortunately, he passed away before the completion of this album. So any band going forward with the name Autograph, at least of this lineup, would have no original members. But there is some question about whether that'll even happen because the original guitar player is now suing them, saying that uh, he may want to start his own version of the band and they should not continue because there's no original um, members in the group. So this might be the last Autograph album, don't know. 
I picked this up because there's uh, Simon Daniels from Jailhouse singing. There's Jimmy Bell on guitar from House of Lords. And as I said, Randy Rand is in here. I'm not sure if the other guy is part of anything, but kind of like a little super group of, uh, you know, those kind of bands. So for me, whether it's under the autograph name or not, I like all those guys. So it was cool getting it just for that. Then we've got Canadian 80s metal band Sword. Not to be confused with The Sword, who just retired. This band here out of the 80s making a comeback reunion album. First one, I think, in about 30 years. Third album. Very, very good. Surprised by that. Wasn't expecting a whole lot, but it sounds fantastic. All right, moving on to uh, non-new release type stuff. Because last week, both the 11th and 18th were huge weeks. Love that, but unfortunately, it also means that um, things are winding down. The 25th is a pretty good week, and then after that, it's one or two new releases up until Christmas, and then we don't pick back up until January. So it should be much smaller weeks going forward. But some of the other stuff I picked up, Killer South American Assault, Killers being the band with Paul Diano in the lineup, uh, of course, writing off of the name, the second Iron Maiden album that he was part of, Killers, using that name to get some name recognition. Uh, this was recorded uh, first with Raven guitar player, uh, John Gallagher, I'm not sure if I'm getting the right Gallagher brother, uh, in there. Um, but so kind of kind of cool that it had him in here playing with them. Unfortunately, he didn't make it to the studio album that was the follow-up, Murder One. So this actually got released after the Murder One album, but was recorded beforehand. So I think this was recorded in like 1992. But an interesting story behind it is it's not actually live at all. Uh, they had lined up a tour, got canceled. So they went into the studio, played live, and then added a uh, live track of screaming audience over it and that's what you've got there and so unfortunately the the crowd noise is a little repetitious if you really listen to it um, which is distracting for me on it but i still had to pick it up because essentially it's live in the studio and i just found that to be a fascinating thing then i picked up a couple um other albums by former uh frontmen i guess if you will and that would be Al Atkins, who was the original lead vocalist in uh, Judas Priest. Now, I never recorded with them, meaning a studio album that came out. Rob Halford was part of the lineup at that point. But first couple albums had tracks that Al At Atkins had written with the band. And so he's kind of made a career out of those tracks, like Victim of Changes, which is a famous Judas Priest song. So a lot of times his albums have re-recordings of those on it. And like I said, he's kind of made a career out of that and so forth. But a little bit more of a foothold than some of those former lead vocalists like uh, Dave Evans, first vocalist of ACDC. He did record a 45 with the band, Can I Sit Next to You Girl, but uh, didn't record on the album or co-write or anything of that nature. So this guy, though... Um, I've always liked him. I've picked up some of his stuff in the past. This one here, Reloaded, is a re-recording of past songs, sort of a greatest hits of his. And this one here was a lost album called Heavy Thoughts, recorded in 1994, but never released at the time, getting a release later in the 2000s. So uh, again, just reading that on these two things, pulled me in and said, whoa, I love Lost Albums and I love Greatest Hits or re-recordings that make up Greatest Hits, especially of artists like somebody like Al At Atkins who's never going to have a Greatest Hits to listen to what is considered to be the best of the best kind of a thing by this sort of underground artist. Uh, jumping back to Paul DeAnno, I got a couple other things from him. Picked these up off of eBay. Those three that you just saw had come from Sound Exchange. But uh, this one here, Praying Mantis, featuring two former Iron Maiden guys, Paul DeAnno and Dennis Stratton, uh, original vocalist and original guitar player. Live album, doing half Praying Mantis songs, who was another new wave of British heavy metal band, and then half Iron Maiden songs. So pretty cool, something I've always wanted, been very hard to come by. That album is always just really up there in price and whatnot, and I managed to find a really decent copy on eBay. And then this one here, Architects of Chaos, featuring Paul Diano on lead vocals. Haven't opened it yet because I've just had so much stuff here. I don't like to open my albums until I'm gonna listen to them. I don't put them away too until I do that. So I will crack this open very shortly and enjoy it. But um, 
one of you viewers out there mentioned it to me and I had totally forgotten that he had done this. It's just something that had, you know, gone right over my head at the time. Although as soon as I saw the album cover and read more about it, I remembered it. But yeah, I'd totally forgotten that he had done it. So when I listened to it, it was a nice throwback to the Maiden stuff. And I'm uh, glad I ordered it, got it off of eBay for, again, a really decent price. So uh, glad to have that in the collection with all the stuff. That was a really nice haul for the week, 15 different items here and so forth. So again, hopefully you guys either found something within this that you want to go search out or you found some of your own things too. Let me know. Otherwise, take care, have a good one, and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye, everyone.